Hey everyone, it's Samantha. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is... <laughs> I don't even really want to say it out loud because I have been like hyping myself up to do this video for so long that it doesn't even feel real that I'm doing it right now. But I am going to attempt... Not attempt. I'm definitely going to do this. I don't care how long it takes me, although it should be interesting to see how long it does take me. I'm gonna read the Throne of Glass series. I can't even hold the whole series at once. Like this is not even all of them. If you're not sure what the series is about, I kind of wanted to give a little bit of backstory. This is about an assassin named Selena Sardothian. Sardothian. So scared to pronounce names in this video. Her name is definitely Selena. I know that. Sardothian. That's how I always said it. It's probably Sardothian, but I don't like that as much. She is an assassin who works with this guy who's kind of like the king of assassins. She is kind of like his heir. When he dies, she would inevitably take over. It's not usual for, first of all, a girl to be an assassin. Second of all, the girl to be 16 years old. And I'm going to turn 16 in like two, three months. That just, I don't know, it, it blew my mind. This whole beginning of the series is kind of her getting picked up by the crown prince Dorian. It's like a competition for her to become the king's champion which is kind of like the king's personal private assassin. It becomes like a whole big thing because she gets thrown into slavery. I am going to be reading every single book in this series in this video. Eight books. One of them being over 900 pages. I've actually started this series before multiple times. So when I was in, I think I was in sixth grade, I read Throne of Glass and then I took a really long break from it and then I read it again because I forgot everything that happened in it. And then immediately after reading it for the second time, I read Crown of Midnight. And then immediately after that, I got like halfway into Air of Fire. I couldn't understand the plot anymore. So I had to just like take a break from it. And now we're starting it all over again. Many people start with Throne of Glass and then go to Akatar. There's a whole other half of readers that start with Akatar and go to Throne of Glass. I I happen to be the kind of person that started Throne of Glass, went to Akatar and finished Akatar, and I'm now coming back to finish Throne of Glass. Don't ask me why, like I literally don't know why, but I just finished reading A Court of Silver Flames because I knew that I couldn't keep up with two of Sarah J Maas's worlds in my head at once. So I'm completely done with the Akatar series. I would give the whole series like a 3.75 four stars because there were some books, aka A Court of Mist and Fury, that I loved, and some books, aka A Court of Silver Flames, that I didn't love as much. And from what I've read of Throne of glass i did love throne of glass give me your opinions down below like did you prefer one over the other because i feel like they're equally popular in their own ways this video is going to be spoiler free i'm going to be talking about the plots loosely so if you're someone who you literally want to know nothing you don't even want to know the back blurbs you want to go in completely blind don't watch this video but if you don't care about like basic plot outlines i'm not going to go into spoilers so that's just your warning I got these books in the middle of a cover change. One of my pet peeves is when an author changes their covers and doesn't make the old covers available anymore. The ones with Selena, the main character, on them like that, I have a majority of the books in this series in those covers and then I have two in the new covers. Eventually I'm going to sell my old covers to someone who needs them and then I'm going to buy the new covers. Ignore the way that they're not uniform, it bothers me too. Since I don't want this video to be a million years long, I figured I would get a head start on the first book. Now I am going to choose the route of reading the assassin's blade first people aren't sure if you read this in the middle of the series near the beginning though or you just read it first and go into the rest of the series so technically i know a lot about the series because i read throne of glass crown of midnight before but i also forgot a lot of what happened so it was almost like i went into this blind so i don't really know how you would consider what i did but i did go into a group chat that i'm in on goodreads and ask around because i know that there are experts for this series and i wanted to know like what do most people say to do and the consensus seemed to be to start with assassin's blade so that's what i did the third time around yes the third time i am more than halfway so far this book has been so good i cannot even tell you the way that my brain instantly jumped from A Court of Silver Flames to this book and just flying through it. It's the best feeling. It's actually a collection of novellas or short stories, kind of like before the first book took place. There are five short stories and I'm on the fourth one. 
and it's so good so far like there have been pirate vibes tavern vibes desert vibes like we've been everywhere on the continent and it's actually been so cool to kind of see little easter eggs like she mentions a lot how she went and she trained with the silent assassins in the desert and you actually get to see her go and train with them she plays piano in this book and she mentions it and i'm like oh i remember the scene in i think it was crown of midnight where she played the piano in the palace and everything i'm going to hopefully finish this book tomorrow during school because i have like a couple down periods where i get to read a little more than usual and then after school i'll try to read a little bit i'm going to the bookstore again tomorrow so i don't know how much i'll be able to read of this but now that i have you all caught up and up to date i'm so excited for this video and i hope you are too before we continue make sure to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to see more videos i usually say that at the end but this is going to be a bit of a longer video i'll see you hopefully tomorrow when i finish the assassin's blade I finished this book the other night and I forgot to update you, but I loved this book. I stayed up really late reading it and I was crying really hard at the ending. Like I knew what was going to happen because I had read the first two and a half books in the series before and they do mention like what happens at the end of this book. So I knew what was going to happen regarding a certain character, but I didn't expect like the way that it happened and the way that it really made me feel like so upset. There was also something where selena says this thing where she's basically like my name is selena sardothian and i will not be afraid and it's kind of like her saying throughout the books and i remember reading the first two books and being like that's a little weird like why is she saying that so much and then i finally realized like why she says it all the time in this book and that really got me and i just kind of lost it i ended up giving it five stars and i just started throne of glass again I got 120 pages into this last night, so I made a pretty good dent in it, and I'm hoping to get at least halfway by the end of the day, and then I'm actually off tomorrow for a holiday, so I'll hopefully be able to finish this by the end of my three-day weekend, and I can move on to the next book, because I'm really excited to start getting into the books that I know nothing about, because obviously I have read this book before, so I know exactly what's happening at all points, um, but I love this book. Like This is honestly one of my comfort books. I gave this five stars the first time around and i'm sure i'm gonna give it five stars again i just picked it up and it felt like coming home and i love books that feel like that one is done it's gonna go back on the shelf and we can continue with this one and soon this will be done too i have updates for you so i finished throne of glass my little reread of throne of glass absolutely ate this up i loved it I loved it a lot more than I remembered loving it, which was so cool. I love when you reread a book and you realize that it was so much better than what you remembered. Honestly, this is a six star book for me and I do think it definitely does weigh in that I read this before. So I kind of knew what to expect and that's probably why I gave it a six star. The plot, the setting, the characters, the writing. Going from the Akatar series to this series is absolutely wild to me. Like, I don't know how she wrote this series first because in my opinion, the writing is just 10 times better, more lyrical. There was this one passage in particular that I had to underline in my editing app on my phone because I couldn't not. Um, and it was kind of this split POV because these books are actually third person split POV, but like you're still inside the characters' minds. And it was at a ball. This was a ball scene. And so there was the whole chapter in selena's perspective and then the two main love interests in the first couple of books dorian and kale because there's like kind of a love triangle type of thing but like a good love triangle it's done very well i don't honestly know who to root for anymore so then we have dorian's pov and then kale's pov and both of them were just so dorian's says dorian walked slowly back to his rooms his heart racing i'm not going to read this line because it's a huge spoiler he could see the gold and her eyes flickering in the candlelight consequences be damned he'd find a way to make it work he'd find a way to be with her he had to he had left from the cliff he could only wait for the net hello and then Kale's perspective was in the garden, the captain of the guard stared up at the young woman's balcony, watching as she waltzed alone, lost in her dreams. But he knew that her thoughts weren't of him. She stopped and stared upward. Even from a distance, he could see the blush upon her cheeks. She seemed young. No, new. It made his chest ache. Still, he watched, watched until she sighed and went inside. She never bothered to look below. 
I had to take a little moment to process that. Next, we have Crown of Midnight. I actually started this this morning when I was in school because I wanted to wait until I got home to film this for you. Um, so I did start this during independent reading time in my English class and I'm loving it so far. I remember this book being like my least favorite out of the two and a half that I read the first time around, but honestly, so far I'm loving it. So I don't really know what was going on the first time. We'll see if that changes. So far, things have been escalating very quickly and it's a totally different vibe from this book because if you know what happens at the end of this book, obviously I'm not spoiling anything in this video, but something huge changes in Selena's life and she has to get used to a whole new life in the palace and at the court and everything. And she is working with some very interesting people it's really good. I love the castle vibes. Like I love whenever in any of the Throne of Glass books, she's at the castle. She's with her dog Fleetfoot. Like something about those vibes. She's always like going out and training with Kale and then she'll like have dinner with Dorian or something. And then she'll just read the rest of the day and snow's falling down or the leaves are falling down depending on what season it's in. I feel like this book and half of Air of Fire that I read the first time around mixed together in my mind. I don't remember what happened and I don't remember which moments were from which book but this book for sure i could recite the plot of this book scene by scene i will hopefully come back to you after i finish a little bit more of crown of midnight <laughs> finally finished this book um it took me forever i think it took me about seven or eight days i genuinely enjoyed this book so much i ended up giving it five stars why are all these books getting five stars i don't give five stars out that easily and every single one of the books so far has been five stars which is great i mean i'm having a great time reading these books i know a lot of stuff that happens in this series so i know pretty much all the main plot twists having to do with selena and like her journey but there are still some questions i have there has been a lot of mention of a stag and i'm getting flashbacks to shadow and bone um and i just found it so strange how she's just like in the woods one day and she sees a stag she keeps seeing a stag in her dreams and i'm just wondering like in my head what does that have to do with anything and i'm sure it has to do with something having to do with the fae because she's finding it near the fae lands i'm pretty sure so we're gonna find out this book was a lot better than i remember it being as well just like the last one especially this one though like i rated this the first time three stars I gave it five the second time. The fight scenes like multiplied in this book and I love that. Like I love seeing her in action and seeing her truly be an assassin. I think that's so cool and what I had been missing the first couple of books. And I'm also still unsure if I like Kale or Dorian better. I know that it genuinely doesn't matter. I kind of am liking Dorian better now. I liked Kale better in the first book, Dorian better in this book. So we'll see where that goes. Um, and one more thing I wanted to say is I think that Selena should pair up and become like besties with Coltane or Caltane, however you say her name, because I don't know why, but like, I feel like nobody likes Caltane, at least from what I've seen, but I think she's genuinely innocent. Like, I don't think she ever intended for her actions to be so drastic. I genuinely like her, and I don't think she deserves what she's been through so far in these books. We're gonna get into this brick of a book. It is about double what this book was, so that should be fun, especially since I have school this week. It's Sunday right now, um, but I'm gonna try my best to power through this book this week, and hopefully it is so good that I never want to put it down. I have not updated you in a very long time and i'm sorry but i've just been like so busy with school sorry for taking so long to not even finish this book i'm not even halfway through yet i have read a lot more of this than i did the first time around so this is pretty much all new content for me i'm not loving this book as much which is kind of annoying because i've heard people say that like after crown of midnight things start to pick up and they start getting better but i'm just not finding it as interesting like i think the plot is very interesting but something about like the vibes of the first three books that i read they were they felt like cozier like a warm hug and that's kind of what i wanted from the rest of these books but i know that that's not how the series continues like the series does become a lot more action-packed one thing that i do really like about this one is the amount of different perspectives that we're getting in assassin's blade i'm pretty sure you only got selena's and then in throne of glass and crown of midnight it was pretty much all selena's perspectives but you got kale and dorian's perspectives sprinkled in there but in this book you're getting a wide variety of perspectives so you have um manon who is a witch and she's kind of like on the opposite 
side of this war that's brewing which is so interesting because you're going back and forth between these rebel groups her and then the crown prince and everybody i've been really excited for every single character's perspective whole thing with dorian and sorsha i think that's how you say her name i feel like it was very rushed i would have enjoyed it more if sarah j mass had introduced sorsha in the first couple of books like this is the first book that we really get to know her like it's very cringy to me and that could just be a me thing. It could get better. I don't know. But we'll definitely update you as soon as I finish the book or maybe even at the end if I want to like film some clips of me reacting to the end. I've just been sitting here trying to finish this book. I'm more than halfway at this point. I really expected this book to be like super fast paced and like a lot going on. And yes, there's a lot going on because this is kind of setting up the rest of the books. And I do understand that she needs this kind of book to bridge the two parts of the series together. I don't really know. It's taken me about two weeks at this point to get this far. So I was just sitting here kind of reading it, reacting to some stuff that was going on. And I figured I would take out my camera and just talk to you randomly about some things. I didn't actually realize this in the moment when I was reading the first couple of books but for some reason i could see a certain character like ending up with dorian vividly like i could picture their lives together that's how much i was like subconsciously thinking about them that character i'm not gonna say which one because it's a major spoiler but that character ends up dying in the second book so that's never gonna happen um and it's kind of making me upset because i'm pretty sure she's setting him up with someone else Where's my girl Coltane? Where where did she go? And is she coming back? I just don't see how she was a bad person. And I feel like we're not getting nearly enough of Kale either. I would really love to see more of him. This book is split up between Dorian, Selena. Wait, does Rowan have a POV in this book? I have no idea. Adian? This this random guy has a POV in this book. He's not a random guy, but I don't really want to say who he is because huge major spoiler. Um and Kale has some POVs and then Manon, the witch girl that I, I think I mentioned in this video, she has POVs. I actually do like her. I don't like her POVs. I think they're a little bit boring, but I do like her and the role she's playing in the story. I think she would be a really good asset to have on the opposite side of the war. Let me see if I can read this to you because I cannot. It's on page 355 of Air of Fire if you have the book. They're basically talking about like this festival called Beltane, which is I guess like a fire festival. Why am I just now realizing what the title of this book means? This is talking about Selena, by the way. As a child, she had run rampant through the field before the gates of blank. Um, the thousand bonfires burning like the lights of the invading army that would too soon be encamped around the white city. It was her night, her mother had said. A night when blank had nothing to fear. People had whispered as she bounded past, embers streaming like ribbons. I'm really liking the Rowan storyline, by the way. What gave Sarah the right to turn me into a liar and say, as soon as I said in this video that I didn't love this book as much, give the most beautiful, heart-wrenching descriptions I have ever read in my life. So they're at the like festival thing. And I think that's when like her writing really shines whenever they're like at a festival or a holiday. She did want to dance, not from joy, but but because she felt the fire and the music meld and pulse against her bones. The music was a tapestry woven of light and dark and color, building delicate links in a chain that latched onto her heart and spread out into the world, binding her to it, connecting everything. I love Selena. I genuinely connect with her on so many different levels. I was just watching Sarah Caroli's reading vlog and it's so funny because she's actually reading the Throne of Glass series right now. Literally nobody told me about the tandem read. Like she mentioned it and I was like, what the heck is that? So I looked it up and apparently some people read Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn at the same time. And now I don't know what to do. So I think I'm going to ask in my Goodreads group chat if anybody has a preference. Because apparently they don't overlap at all, but they take place at the same point in the series. So like some people interchange the chapters. I'll come back later. I just finished. I wish I had liked this one more than I actually did. Like I have heard people say that this one isn't their favorite, but I have also heard people say that this one is the one where it starts getting really good. And I do think that this is setting up a really interesting storyline that I'm really gonna enjoy for the rest of the books. But for me personally, this just wasn't one of my favorites. I think this is probably gonna get three stars for me. I like the way that at the end, all the storylines with the various characters and how they were 
all in like different parts of the continent and then they all come back together. I also did get an answer to my question about the tandem read. So I still have to read this whole book. I'm gonna read Queen of Shadows and then for the next two, Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn are the two that you are supposed to read. You don't have to read them as a tandem read, but people do. And so I asked in a Goodreads group chat, does anybody know which way is better if I should do the tandem read, read them separately? And they basically said yes to the tandem read. So that's what I'm gonna do because I trust them in that group chat. Hopefully I can finish this a little bit faster than Air of Fire. I'm a little bored by it and I'm a little upset because it is kind of feeling like air of fire continued which I knew it would feel like that I am enjoying it it's not like I'm disliking it like this is looking to be so far a four-star book which is good next week is Thanksgiving break so I'm gonna have a lot of free time to read write pretty much do whatever I want that's kind of where we are right now I am gonna continue this book over the weekend and update you when I am a little farther in <laughs> I'm this far into the book, things are getting very intense. I have never read a book where there's like a war going on and I don't think that the main characters are gonna win the war. But in these books, like I genuinely don't know how they're gonna win. They're up against so many different things. We have a really good like friend group now. We have an alliance and our main character hasn't had an alliance in a really long time. She just said, war was coming and they might not all survive it I'm hoping to finish this book by the end of today we're slowly but surely getting through i finished it i finished it last night i stayed up super late and it actually wasn't that bad like if i don't want to stay up late to finish a book i don't i had the best time finishing this book and i didn't want to forget anything that i needed to tell you so i have a note sheet right here that i just like wrote in the middle of the night it was a roller coaster of a book honestly like the beginning was a little boring to me the middle was really good and then the end just like totally blew me away i ended up giving it five stars didn't think I would. The first thing that I wanted to say is I actually guessed something that happened, but it wasn't in a way that I was like upset that I had guessed it. It was in a way where I felt so smart for guessing it. The whole time I was like, I think the two sides are going to maybe team up a little bit. It honestly felt like a Disney Channel crossover episode. Like all of my favorite characters kind of met at the end of this book and started like talking about the stuff going on in the world. And I was like, this is so weird. Also, my two favorite female characters, the two main female characters, they met and they had like a big fight duel type of thing. And that was literally so cool. I love them so much and I think they would be the best power duo. Romance in this book? Why couldn't she have written Akatar like this? All the talk about fate, it really reminded me of Invisible String by Taylor Swift. This book was moving me to tears a lot more than I expected it to. Like there were just certain moments where it was just like talking about fate and how certain characters were brought to each other by other certain characters. Now I'm going to be torturing myself by doing the tandem read. I'm hoping that it will be worthwhile and I will enjoy doing it. Ignore the fact that this is a new cover and this is an old cover. I'm so sorry. I don't like looking at them either like that. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm sitting here ready to make a bookmark that's going to help me kind of keep track of the chapters that I need to read for the tandem read. And I have this just like clear bookmark casing. It got like dirty because I brought it to the beach, but I don't think that's going to matter too much. I'm just going to like put the chapter order on a piece of paper and put it in there. So I went back to when I put the question that I had about the tandem read in the Goodreads group chat. And this amazing girl, Kaylee, put in here... A link for me. This is the way that I'm going to be doing the tandem read. It's finally finished. Also, that isn't a mistake. They're just like continued on to the back because look at how many chapters and I did combine any that could be combined. This is how all books should be printed. I just went through and did like the little trick of like the 20 pages on each side and pressing down to make sure that the spine wouldn't crack, but I didn't even really need to do that. It's so floppy. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate how much prettier this is compared to what they are in the old books? the difference i am slowly but surely getting through these books also want to mention i cut my hair the other day so that's kind of a big change i'm about 150 pages in each one and i'm still doing the tandem read and it's actually not as bad as i thought it would be like i thought i would get really bored and just lose interest i think the bookmark that i made has been really coming in handy and i should have made two honestly to put in each book but 
The difference between them, I just wanted to mention because I personally didn't know, is that this book is following her main character, Selena, in one part of the continent and she's with people that she's kind of been sticking with throughout the series. And then we have Kale, who is going off with Nazarin. I don't have to keep that a secret because you will not know who she is until you meet her. He's with Nazarin and another character that we actually meet in the prequel, Assassin's Blade, and I love her so much. Like, you'll know who I'm talking about if you've read the books. But yeah, he's on the southern continent doing a very important task. I'm actually really enjoying this tandem read. I just haven't been able to get through them that fast because of school. I'll update you when I am maybe halfway, maybe even done with them. I just kind of want to finish these and get to Kingdom of Ash. I have a little friend over here. You wanna say hi? What is this book doing to me? <laughs> I stayed up super late last night reading and I'm not even halfway through yet. I'm obsessed. There is a really strong urge to just binge this book. It's probably better to break it up with like the book that I'm obsessed with and the book that I'm kind of low-key struggling with. Every little thing about this book, the writing, so lyrical, the romance between two of the main characters, one that you meet in Assassin's Blade and one that we know and love. I was super worried that I wouldn't enjoy this book as much because it's not following the main character. I could read eight more books just with this. I'm gonna come back when I finish them. I persuaded to read with me. Starting your throne of glass journey. <laughs> so lucky. I finished the tandem read. It's done. It's over. I read both of these thick books. I think this took me about two to two and a half weeks. It is okay if this takes you a long time. I saw someone on my like little Goodreads thread conversation talking about how it took her three months. So I know this is a big task and you can do it no matter how long it takes you. You will get through it, obviously, if you continue to push yourself. This book actually came first in the series, I believe. It was this one and then this one was written and they are not really intended to be read together, but people have put together the tandem read. I feel like everybody was telling me personally like you should do the tandem read and they were giving me reasons they were giving me pros and cons which I appreciated because if I didn't think I could do it or I didn't want to do it I wouldn't have done it like it doesn't really matter that much to me but I'm glad I did do it like it really did help but all that to say I do think it's important to know like if you don't think you can do it or you think you will enjoy the story separately the way that they were intended to be read by Sarah J Maas you don't have to do it like it's not something that's going to really affect the reading that you're going to be doing because you're going to get to the same point. I found that it was honestly easier for me to understand the plots by doing this. The way that people have laid it out and the website that I used, which I will link down below, the reason why this is considered a tandem read is these two books are happening at the exact same time or point in the timeline. Events from this book are mentioned in this book and also vice versa. Events in this book are mentioned in this book. If you go back and forth, you're going to hear of stuff that's happening in the other book, which is what I really enjoyed. This book I gave four stars. This book I gave five stars. Wish me luck. This is the longest book that I have ever read in my life. This is 980 pages exactly. I'll update you when I've read a little more. Also, if you haven't noticed yet, I did get all of the new covers for Christmas. So I do have all of the new covers now all on my shelf. They look so pretty and the ombre effect on the spines is so amazing. I am so happy about that. So I am now 209 pages into Kingdom of Ash and I have some thoughts. Honestly, this book took me a little bit to get into. Like I have been reading this book for I want to say a month now, which is kind of a long time for me. Sarah J Mass books are so weird for me. I feel like I'm not into them when I'm not reading them, but then as soon as I read it and I actually sit, I get into it. I'm kind of mood reading at this point because I don't want to get into a book slump because of this book. This book is following basically every single POV from the tandem read. So in the tandem read, you had one book following two different types of POVs in one book. And then in the other book, it was two totally different characters switching back and forth. This book, it's all four of those POVs like split up. I just got to a really confusing part of this book. I'm on page 217, so really not that far since I talked to you this morning. I'm in the POV of Elide, Lorcan, and Rowan right now. They went to a tavern and they were asking people about something having to do with the plot that I can't tell you. And they meet a group of fae. 
okay? And one of the Fae, her name is Esar. Esar? Es Esar? They're making it seem like we know who this person is. I swear to you, I've never met this girl in my life. Like, I have read seven books in this series and I don't remember her being mentioned at all. So I'm about to go into my Goodreads group chat, which is literally just saving me at this point oh i'm so confused like was this in a bonus scene was this in her original draft that was like on a website like wattpad before it got published <laughs> i'm reading back i'll put the picture on the screen but i'm reading back what i just typed in the group chat and i'm like why is reading a sarah day mass series like such a little insider book club type of thing that like nobody else who doesn't have the context for this will understand finally finished i finished all eight books in this series and i actually did kind of like keep track because i marked down every book i read on goodreads it took me about a month to finish this book i finished the series in about three months i started it in october and then read all the way through until like beginning to middle of january i'm not necessarily a super fast reader i'm also not necessarily a super slow reader i figured out who sr is nobody actually answered that so it turns out SR is a character who showed up in a bonus chapter. Um, so basically a deleted chapter because I don't think that chapter is actually available anymore. Like it's not in any of these books. I think it used to be in one of the books or it was on like an online version or some sort of ebook. There's the whole thing with Mistward, which I'm pretty sure is around the time of the Fire Festival. And SR basically meets up with Rowan and Aelin and has a huge conversation. Don't really know why this was deleted. I was going like down a rabbit hole on the internet to try and figure it out and people were saying the same thing. They're like, this is such a pivotal scene. So I knew I wasn't going insane. I had never heard her name before. She might've been mentioned in passing, but she did not have as big of a role as they claimed she did. I rated it five stars and I want to explain why. Most of the reasoning behind why I gave it five stars is because it is the last book in the series. I love the series as a whole. I think the storyline is perfect. She is such a genius, Sarah J Maas. You get all of these POVs and all of these characters coming together. And it was just so cool to see like characters interacting that had never met before. My least favorite chapters in this book were the ones with Adian and Lysandra. I was skimming 99% of their chapters. I would have been angry if there weren't those chapters included because I would have been like, she's not showing them at all. Where are they? How are they? But she could have made them a little more interesting. My favorite character out of the entire series, and I knew this from Tower of Dawn, second tower of dawn she was introduced again i knew who my favorite character was and that is irene i don't want to spoil anything but she is not at her full health i would say in kingdom of ash and she still is literally like the biggest hero out of the entire series like honestly if she were not in this series these characters probably all would have died there was a huge change in the vibe of this series and i feel like it started relatively early like you have throne of glass and crown of midnight and those two books not even those vibes are the same like honestly i was chasing the vibes that i got from throne of glass this entire series and the entire series kind of evolved into something more something different think this aesthetic for maybe like assassin's blade throne of glass and half of crown of midnight and then when you get to the halfway point in crown of midnight throughout the entire rest of the series you get this vibe another thing is tower of dawn completely different vibe from either of them this is the vibe i got while reading tower of dawn and i absolutely love that and tower of dawn was my favorite book in the series i want to talk about the mention of resand because i swear they are talking about resand so there's this point in this book where at the very end aelin has to kind of travel through universes and i'm not going to say any more than that she can't go inside the universes but she can pass through them by falling through them and look inside and see what it looks like. She passed through a world of snow-capped mountains under shining stars, passed over one of those mountains, where a winged male stood beside a female, gazing at those very stars. Fae. They were Fae, but this was not her world. The winged male, beautiful beyond reason, snapped his head toward her as she arced across his starry sky. He lifted a hand as if in greeting. A blast of dark power like a gentle summer night slammed into her, not to attack, but to slow her down. A wall, a shield that she tore and plunged through, but it slowed her. The winged male's power slowed her just enough. That's Resand. 
She passed through a world where a great city had been built along the curve of a river, the buildings impossibly tall and glimmering with lights. And I haven't read Crescent City, but I'm assuming that's the world that Crescent City takes place in. I want to talk about the series reading order that I would recommend because there are so many different ways. Sarah J Mass actually just recently came out with the official way to read it, which is to read Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, then Assassin's Blade, and then Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows. Empire of Storms and Tower of Dawn separately and then read Kingdom of Ash. I think her way is totally fine and like if you have been waiting all this time for the actual like correct way to do it, go ahead and do it that way. I would recommend starting with Assassin's Blade, then read Throne of Glass, then read Crown of Midnight, then read Air of Fire, then Queen of Shadows. Then when you get to the tandem read that could or could not be a tandem read, I recommend doing the tandem read. The actual series that she has written, the way that I would recommend reading them is to read Akatar first, Throne of Glass, Crescent City. I want to do a little fan art reaction and then I'll end this video just quickly because I want to see how I pictured certain characters and if I pictured them the way that they were described and the way that other people picture them. So let me grab my computer and we'll hop on Pinterest and do that really quickly. This is mainly going to be for the people that have actually read this series because I don't think I'm allowed to show fan art. The fan art has a lot of spoilers in like the border and the background. We're starting with Selena. This is really cool. I I would say overall, yes, I did picture her this way. Next, we're gonna go to Aelin. That's a really cool fan art with the mask from Kingdom of Ash. I think I see her more accurately than I saw Selena. Kale, yeah, I would say I did picture him like that. Dorian, hey, this is the most different. Let's do a read. Pictured her so specifically and I really don't know if this is how people picture her. This isn't actually how I pictured her. Who else? Manon? Manon, I know I pictured exactly like her because I've seen fan arts of her before. I think Manon's fan art is the best. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this whole journey that you went on with me. And if you haven't read this series, please go read it. This is your sign. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up because this video took forever to make. We'll see you in the next one.